Tired and thumbnail shit hints at it. Hi, my name is More Seed America. I'm gonna be going into story time. Uh, me just talking about stuff that I did throughout PSO2. Um, some things I regret not doing. And then also talk about things I still need to do for PSO2. Depending on what you want to see, you may want to look in the description for the time skip. Because one, I'm not gonna edit this video as much. And then two, uh, yeah, this video might be long because I might go into story time a lot. So, once again, I'm, I'm going to be most likely going through this sort of intro where I talk about my damn history with the game. If you want to skip that because you already heard it multiple times, you can look in the description once again. So, I played on the Japanese side. I started in summer of 2014, and I've been playing this ever since, well, episode 2, 3, stopped halfway through 4... Got back at the end of episode 5 and then got into episode 6, played throughout most of episode 6. So I have roughly around maybe 5 to 6 years. I lose count because the big one that I forgot about or the big one that I'm not really conscious about is like the huge time gap from when I stopped playing in episode 4. I know I didn't play thoroughly through episode 5 but I did visit the game again through my PS4. However, it was not that great because I could not read Japanese characters and I had so much stuff in my storage by then. But it was an up and down roller coaster. I remember a good chunk of things from episode 2 and 3 era specifically, maybe into episode 4 as well. But I, I have a lot of stories. I remember the time when I was in B6. I remember those people, those individuals. I remember the time of uh, the B20 days. I also remember the time of DDoS. There's a good chunk of things that I remember from back then. I don't know how many other people remember all these various things. And a good chunk of the important moments in game, I've recorded it through YouTube. And the big one, the first one that I did was talking about Astro Soul making those certain abilities. And then also going into making my austere set or uh, specifically my austere weapon and then after that I made sure to try to record all these key moments that I've done in the game where I made certain weapons and maybe some units as well and some augments and abilities granted that some of them I had to uh edit because one I didn't really do a thorough recording of it and then two it was just sitting there I just wanted to release it as it is um, some of the videos that I made in the past weren't as great, especially when it comes to later, when, um, what was it? When a lot of people from Global were getting into the game and then they saw some of these old videos of mine, they were super outdated. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> had to take them down or just hide them away. I didn't delete them because I do want to keep a bit of a, what is it? Bit of a reference so I can see what I did in the past and then look at me now and see how much of an improvement it is or things I still need to work on. But yeah, been playing the game for years. I helped a lot of people. Some people may even remember me back on the Japanese days on Ship 2. Some people may not even know who the fuck I am. I don't really mind. Uh, but yeah, I, I had a lot of ups and downs with this game. This game also helped shape a lot of things I didn't really do in the past. I was pretty much a loner, a solo player, until I bumped into the people that I met in... Uh, what is it, Ship 2 and B6 back then in Episode 2 era. There were a good chunk of people, Japanese and Westerners. Uh, those who weren't local, but pretty much I learned a lot. Um, I developed a lot of my characters from all these people. I started to shape myself and do a lot more things, uh, good and or bad. So this game, I cherish it a lot because this is the first game that I actually do a lot more in. Uh, well, no, excuse my English. I did a lot more in this game compared to all the other games that I played. I did play some other games that I spent a good chunk of maybe a couple years in or months. Like RuneScape, for example, I remember that, but I wasn't as... I didn't really explore all the avenues and routes for that game, but I did play it with a good chunk of my pals and I did spend maybe at least a year in that game then there was also adventure quest and some of the other branches of adventure quest and i played maybe a good year of that as well so there's a good chunk of games that i played for a long time um but there's a good chunk of games that i didn't really play as thoroughly and this is the first one where i actually have a lot more years behind and i just spent a lot more time with so yep and once again this is on the japanese side for global pso2 i did play upon its microsoft release but i rage quit <laughs> because of the things that i saw and the things i was able to point out i got back into global ps2 because of you guys the viewers 
because um you guys peer pressured me into it not only that all the horror stories i heard i was like ah oh, yeah no it shouldn't be that bad i'm sorry that i doubted some of these and these people some of my members that uh really hint at how bad it was after i experienced it myself it's not hey well anyways that's a separate video um but yeah i have a lot of fun especially with the people that i played with hopefully some of the people that I played with in the past are going to come back because of New Genesis, but we shall see. Anyways, that's a bit of the intro spiel of my history and time with PSO2. Now, to actually see how many hours I played, I will show that when I get into the game. Um, I have a lot of characters. I have characters over there in Global. I made one for each ship, so since there's four ships on Global, I have one character for each ship. However, I will have to apologize and I will have to uh, stress this out <laughs> when I make the video talk about the Global side. Um, I did spoil ship 2 and 1 a little bit more with my present compared presence compared to that of ship 3 and 4. I, I didn't really go to ship 3 and 4 as much. Um, so I would have to apologize and I'll, I'll talk a bit further into that in the separate video. So yeah, but I mainly play on the Japanese side and I am a lot more active on the Japanese side compared to that of global because... This account is owed. There's a lot of stuff that I have I have a lot of monetary value with. And um, some of this stuff is extinct and you don't really see it anymore in game. So yeah, I spoiled the living shit out of this account. Not only that, my characters on this account are just spoiled as well. Because I want to make sure that all my characters are nice looking. Um, But yeah, I have 22 characters on uh, the Japanese side on ship 2. They're all on ship 2. There's pros and cons to having characters on the same ship. I was going to go into videos about that, but I just didn't go to it because it's like, um, NGS was around the corner. Upon the release of NGS, and then seeing some stuff, it's like, it was a bit late for me to do that. But yeah, I have 22 characters. I didn't max it out at 30 because I really hate fucking <laughs> weeklies. Even though they dumbed it down with ARCs weeklies, thank god. It is a lot better than what it was in the past, but even then it does get tedious and they're still following the same pattern where they could have easily tackled this and did something else. But, uh, yeah. I play on the Japanese side, I have 22 characters. The first three characters I ever made, and this is now me going into story time with these characters, if you want to skip that, get into some other parts, then uh, you can look in the description for the time skip. But the first three characters I ever made, the first one I actually made is this guy, Death shadow zero he's a male cast character yes i made a male cast compared to like a female waifu the reason being is because it's a goddamn robot it's a miniature robot who wouldn't want to be a robot i wanted to make a robot so i made this shadow zero now i had a lot of episodes where i was gonna delete this guy <laughs> um a good chunk of my old v6s remembered how many times like they, they would hear me talk about this guy and be like Oh yeah, I may want to delete him because I messed up on his mag. I did so many mistakes. And the second character that I made after that character is Zillian Shirelle. Now, technically I would just keep it as Shirelle, but I just decided to make it into a, an entire name. And the reason why I'm going to distinguish her as Shirelle, then you're going to hear me talk about my other character, which has like Beta, Zillian Beta in their name. The reason why is because they're actually two different characters in my own OC development story thing in my head or that I already made. But yeah, Shirelle is completely different of Zillion. So even though it says Zill Zillion Shirelle in her name, it is actually Shirelle. I'm going to be naming her Shirelle specifically. But yeah, Shirelle is the what? She used to be a white hair, but I got annoyed at how so many people were using white hairs well, or white as the main hair color um especially during episode three i remember seeing a lot of people going for that color i was like screw it i don't like being with the entire crowd i don't like the fact that everyone's going for white so i'm gonna go pink and you don't see a lot of like pink hair so i decided to go with it but this was also based on someone as well which i'm not gonna go into details about so yeah they were my second character my third character is a cosplay of General Esdeath. Now, she's a reference to, what is it, a Kagame Ga Kill. Um, but at that time, when I created her, I was, a, I was reading the manga, I was a big fan of her character, even though she's, like, really fucking crazy. 
I really like that. I really like her evil personality and character and her mentality and mindset. So I made her out of love and admiration of said character. After that, the fourth character I made is LVOX Mark II. Now, if you don't know what that stands for, for it's pretty much little version of Zillion. And uh, yeah, she was my fourth, char fourth character. And I made her because I wanted to work with Ranger Hunter. Uh, I think I tried to do several other things as well, Ranger Gunner and whatnot. But the big reason why I didn't play as much, you will see that the hours for my first three characters are definitely above 500. Um, actually, Sherelle is someone that I spoil a good. <laughs> I spoiled the most, so you can see that I have 4,164 hours with her, 41 minutes and 26 seconds. But yeah, um, out of these three characters, you can see they're above 500. General Ezeth has 728, Death Shadow Zero has 878. The reason why I didn't spend as much time with her is because one, she was a lolly. I was afraid that there were a good chunk of people that would bother me because of it. And there were moments where a lot of people bothered me because I was on a lolly character. Um, good and or bad. And then the f second reason is because it was the Ranger. Now, back then, Ranger duty was really stern. And you will get called out like a motherfucker if you didn't know how to put on a weak bullet. Or if you were a Ranger and you didn't have weak bullet, people might criticize you because of that. Um, I think I was trying to go launcher and I was afraid to actually use Ranger with an MPA because of that. So... I didn't play on them as much. Now, I am trying to play a bit more with them, um, especially since I revamped their looks from way back then. And then not only that, uh, they do have a bit of a uh, uh, another class I can work with, which is Luster. Granted that, I already have like several other characters that are Luster mains, and it's like pretty much just the same with them. I think after that, the fifth character would have to be Victoria because I don't remember these characters exactly in said order. There's like 22 of them. Um, I forgot who I created here and there. But Victoria was created because I got interested in uh, the Force Tekker and then also toying around with the Dark Element because I saw Day. If you don't know who Day is, he's one of my old pals from the B6 days and he does have his own channel so check him out. He does PS2 content. Uh, yeah, because of Day, I made this character to kind of be Day's apprentice and also go down that same path that he was doing using the dark techniques and whatnot. It was fun, but uh, pretty much Victoria is now my Phantom Rod main, along with a good chunk of crafted techniques that I don't have on my other characters. Um, I think six, six care. well, wait. Okay, yeah, I'm losing. I, I'm trying to remember who I made next. I know I made Shadow somewhere around... Shadow was unique. And I made him because I wanted to go fighter. And he... I did play with him during the episode 3 time. Because I did spoil him. Out of all my characters, even though I spoiled Shirao a lot. I went with Shadow instead. And I gave him the austere fist. Um, in terms of my fighter gameplay, it was not the best. Um, I kind of relied on a couple of things, especially with the Never Give Up perk and then using that in combination with the Limit Break. But I wasn't the best of a fighter hunter. And uh, some of the stuff that I got for Augments and the fixes weren't ideal because of how Glass Cannon I was. But yeah, Shadow, I made him somewhere. I don't remember if he was my 6th character or my 7th. Because I also know that I also I made new. Now news new is a reference from Kill a Kill. If I can find you, news from Kill a Kill. Now she doesn't have the exact look that I was trying to go for, and I need to rework her. Um, I don't know if I had to rework her face and whatnot. The big problem with news physique is uh well she's kind of a lolly, but at the same time not. But like she has that one face that I'm not really happy about um but anyways yeah i made new now new's a unique character that i made because they were pretty much my fighter bouncer they are still my fighter bouncer and i still want to do some stuff um with them and the reason why i'm breaking it down is because this will go into some of the later points that i will have in this video but yeah i think i made princess asha because one i was working on my novel 
And then two, I wanted to make another dual blade main character, but I wanted to use the other style, which was break stance. And then around that time, I also made Death Heart, I think? Yeah, Death Heart, where are you? Death Heart, actually no, Death Heart was a bit later because I started to do a series with them to show how you can level up a character from level 1 all the way to max level. Problem is, during that series, um, I had to leave the game because I couldn't play it anymore. And then not only that, as I tried to continue the series, they added more stuff, like a bit more of the bonus keys, and then they added, uh, what was it? episode 5 and then 5 content when I got back into the game it was like getting into episode 6 so yeah it wasn't the ideal time to toy around with though mm, I think most of the other characters I started to add in episode 6 and I started to play with them and use different successor classes mm, yeah De Death Heart was also supposed to be the dark version of a spinoff of hyper actually no i messed up i messed up there's one other character that i made during that time and it's my elf character this chick down here where are you it's not x it's not shiva she i definitely know that i made shiva in uh what was it shiva was made in episode six era when the star gym got uh star gym episode six star gym got released and then I pulled all her stuff and I didn't know what to do with it because none of my characters would benefit off of it. And I could technically have, uh, what, traded it in for um, badges, which then I can go for selector, but I didn't do that. Now, before I go and find that elf character of mine, I need to talk about this chick. Now, she is technically a midget, not a lolly, because of the fact that I toured around and I joked around with a bunch of the uh, certain aspects of uh, a woman. I could be very blunt about it, but I'm not going to do that since I'm going to try to monetize this video. So yeah, this character I made on purpose because it was a joke character. And not only that, they are my summoner. Um, I have not done a lot with the summoner class. I did the basic stuff that I would be able to do, um, especially in terms of getting through time attacks. That was the main goal of me getting this character. But in terms of actually fleshing them out and doing so much damage, no, I did not do that. Uh, there's a couple of things I had to rework on. I might get back into it, but that's not a main priority. I did uh, develop several of their other classes, so they are maxed out. So they're also one of my other lusters that I could play around with. Where are you? I know. Okay, so here's my elf character. This elf character I made as my, another glass cannon and she was a uh, force attacker but instead of going the dark route she went the fire route and um i did spoil her a bit but then i kind of regret making a couple of things especially the certain t attack units in like episode four and i did spend a bit of money here and there with the augments and the fixes this general is death of death hearts but i think a good chunk of my other characters like zillion zillion omega uh where are you because I made another Zillion. Now, Zillion is a bit more of a... Well, one, she's different from that of Shirelle. But she still uses the same... What is it? Specs that I have from Shirelle. But I tweak them a bit more with Zillion. And pretty much Zillion is the white hair version of Shirelle. Well, they're, they're two different characters. But technically, like using the same sort of aspects, I just modify Zillion to be a bit taller and dye, uh, have her hair as uh, white hair. Because... In her OC description, she's actually a white hair. Um, and it's also a bit more to it as well. But yeah, some of these other characters that I made later on, especially when I got back into the game, they are references to some of my stories. Uh, Pandora, for example, she's part of the story that is with Lauren. And Lauren is a part of that... Uh, what is it? Yeah, the, 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 the thing is, I use PSL2 as a way to also visually represent some of my characters have like have 3d models for that um under girl pretty much a reference to uh what is it the monster girl stuff however i was gonna have her do a lot of gimmicks where she would be able to go into certain undead variants so there would be like the lynch i think 
Uh, what, what's the other undead type? The Jing Sui? Jing Shui? Uh... A mummy. A banshee. And right now, she she's more of a banshee... Uh... Cosplay. But yeah, there, there was like so many things I wanted to do with her, but I might redo her and I might want to try to change her name. Although it's going to take me a lot of ACs to change her goddamn name. So she needs to go through a rework. I might actually base her off of one of my other OCs instead of just leaving her as Undead Girl. So she's a rework. Out of all my characters, she has to go through a rework. Princess Asha has to go through a rework. Laura might need to go through it because I still don't have the right look for her. Uh, because she's supposed to look sexy, but also have, like, muscles, like, toned out abs and all that. So I do need to work with her a bit more. Hopefully in NGS, I might be able to pull it off. Um, X is just a random character that I decided to make. I also need to rework Shiva's face because someone pointed out how Shiva's face wasn't really Shiva. And that would bother the living shit out of me. So I need to rework that. But yeah, some of these characters... Well, Jamie's also another character I need to rework because of... Um, but he, he needs to look like a trap. But the problem is, uh, he, he's using, like, it, with what I saw in NGS, you can definitely turn around with the body a bit more. So hopefully I can transform Jamie into a bit more of a slimmer look that I want to pull off. Um, I made Volcanus because I got annoyed at how there's so many common colors with cast and I didn't see an orange one, so I was like, let me make an orange cast instead. Uh, Esta and Avalon, they're both in their own stories. Uh, Avalon's in reference to Lauren's story along with Pandora, then Esta's actually in reference to the, well, with Princess Asha. Um, Bella Luna, this one I think I just made on a whim. Um, I might want to rework her. I don't know what I have in terms of her OC history. Most of these characters have like a bit of a spreadsheet in my head where I kind of have an ideal look for them. And this is what I want to go for. Bella Luna is the one that I didn't really flesh out as much. But anyways, that is most of my, that's most of my characters. That's like a good, what, all 22 of them. Now I could go into a bit more history with it. And if you guys want to read some of their bios, I might get around to it. I do like how RC, if you don't know who RC is, link to their channel in the description. But they do have on the Discord a uh, link to their... Well, actually, they have their own website, I think. And they do flesh out their characters, and I like that. Um, it didn't go heavily into, like, some of their stories. If I try to go heavily into some of my character story stories, it would take... Well, a good week or so, or months, I don't know. But anyways, let me talk about achievements uh, in this game. Most of it, technically in-game, I've recorded it and you can see it on my YouTube channel. Especially when it comes to me getting Alstare, me getting some of these certain weapon series, um, me doing some augments and affixes. But I try to record most of the technical stuff in-game. In terms of money, uh, I'm still trying to get a bunch of money. Now you might be saying, Morph, why the fuck do you have 2 billion when NGS is around the corner? Well, you see... I really want to get PR Pose 5. Now, PR Pose 5 is stupidly expensive. And if you don't know what that pose is, it is a limited time um, lobby action that you get for doing the collab with Edo, I think. It's the one with the pants company. And um, you had to buy their pants, and then I think it's also RNG to get the code. And then that you have to be in Japan for, or you have to get it in some other means, and it is expensive. Um, but yeah, that PR Pose 5 pose, uh, it is stupidly expensive on ship 2 right now. It is like 5 bill. I only have 2 bill. So I really want to get this. But I need to get a bunch of money. And the thing is, I could try to get this because I have a lot of items. I could sell for a bunch of money. But the problem is that right now, PS2 is kind of dead until... It's about to become NGS release. And, uh, yeah. Some people may want to try to get some of the stuff that is super old. That some people have. But then the problem is you have to try to get said money for that. But the question is, are people really going to be playing PSO2 when NGS is out? Now, that that's a rhetorical question. Because it, it can be. It can, it can or it can't be. It just depends on how people view things and what their priorities are. But, 
yeah, um, that pose I really want, but it is stupidly expensive. Anything else I want in game is dummy fucking expensive because it is an old collab item that is most likely in the billions as well. Um, right now I'm able to retrieve like 156 mil. And once again, I have a lot of items in here. I have a separate video going into my storage and talk about what I decide to do. But there's a good chunk. Well, it's not on this character. I would have to swap to a different character. But I do have some stuff that is stupidly expensive. Like this thing right here is 3 billion. Granted that this is on my ship, aka ship 2. Might be different for other ship. But yeah, this cushion pills, lobby action 498. It is 3 billion. So, yeah, um, I really want to get that. Uh, PR Pulse 5 is the only big thing that I want to try to get. Anything else in terms of augments and fixes equipment wise, I could try to farm and just do it myself for a cheaper price than what I see on the market. Uh, I could still sell some stuff and like empty out the storage of mine because there it's still full. There's a lot of stuff in here that I could try to get rid of uh, weapon wise and organize this a bit better. Um, that's going to be off, off stream and I would have to do it. But a lot of the technical things I did, I finished them um, in terms of playtime. I do need to show that in my arcs. No, in my play records. So the amount of times that I have played. or Well, my total playtime is 10. Oh, I thought it was 15,000, huh? Apparently it's 10,000. So it's 10,160 hours and 39 minutes. Hmm, I thought it was 15, unless I was wrong. I think someone else has 15, and I, I just remembered them saying 15, and I kind of confused that with my number. But yeah, this is how many times I've been playing. Um, titles I've obtained is 919. Highest damage dealt is 9,999,109, most likely damage cap. I don't know what was able to get to the said damage cap, but alright. Um, number of times I died is 6,861, and then these are all the different rankings that I got. And then in total enemies defeated 1,841,819. Um, some of those hours, it has been an on and off things. I remember in episode 3, I did leave my laptop on and leave the game running. So I can catch like a Magatsu uh, emergency quest. And that was when I was like super active. Other than that, I got a lot of weapons, a lot of cr uh, claws, iron, crass iron weapons that are finalized. I did get... Most of the 15 stars upon its moments, like when Alice got released, I did go for one of those. When the uh, live stream was a big thing, I did get one of those. When it comes to the light tweet, I definitely went for that immediately. Same can be said for Stone Puros. So um, I do need to rework this armory. I might just like get rid of a couple of things and just like add more of these uh, panels down here. Uh, it's not really finished, like. I still have a bunch of weapons that I still need to put on display. I think this one I would need to put on display. Hold up. Display. This weapon of mine. Oh wait, it, it, it's, it's gonna look different because of the, uh, what, the camo rewritten stuff. So yeah, I have a good chunk of weapons. I still need to rework a bit of my room. Um... Yeah, this green screen is fucking useless to me now. I'm kind of mad that I spent a bit of money on that. Still got these mats. I still got this. Uh, I got this. I got that. Still got this trophy. Now, I don't know what place this is. I think it's third. But this was like a competition between all the ships way back then. That they handed out. Um, A bit of game room stuff. The dance room area. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to like some stuff. Now in terms of crafting, I didn't really tour around with it as much. I didn't see, like there is a bit of worth behind it. But if I can get my friend or someone who did invest a lot into it and they have high levels and higher chances to just uh, make some of the stuff that I would need, then I would bother them about it. And uh, it kind of sucks that this system wasn't fleshed out as much. When it comes to this character's craft level, I don't think they did a lot. Uh, what's your level? They're level 37, so they did a fair amount of it, but I actually got into crafting because of Zig more than me trying to do it on my own accord. Um, there's, once again, perks to it, but I just didn't really see a money investment. Like, I, I know that you could earn a bit of money in crafting, but it wasn't as much compared to that of Augmented and Other Fixes. 
So I went down that path and I stick to that path instead of the crafting. The only reason to why I went through the crafting route was because back then in episode 3, the seals were important and you couldn't really get lab to grind because of that. Um, Global didn't really have that sort of issue and they didn't really go down that same route but that's how I was able to get a bunch of lambda grinders and that's why some of my craft levels are high for certain characters from back on in that time period um, back then. But yeah so when it comes to that uh, the only two main things I have to finish currently right now is the story. I still need to complete the story I will most likely stream it because I am lazy when it comes to trying to edit and upload uh, said recordings. And it takes me a while to actually upload recordings. So I might as well do this uh, in a stream. I am going to be thorough about this. And I am not going to be skipping a good chunk of it. The only cutscene I might skip is Alma's. Because she does spoil her some stuff. And spoils some stuff. And I got to know it when she spoils some stuff. So I'm going to be going through these stories. Both so uh, sub and uh, main ones. Um, I'm already done with 1 and 2, that means I still have a bunch of star gems I could obtain. So I need to go through episode 3, after that episode 4 and 5, and then get into 6. So that's the big thing, I had to complete the story before I get into NGS, hopefully. Um, or I will get through the story in due time. Now, once I finish episode 1 through 3, I might also watch the animation as well. Well, PS2 Oracle. Now, the last objective that I need to do is to, uh... Complete Death 100 Solo Sedan. I'm able to get past Death 99, but right now I am stuck on Death 100. Now, I could ignore this because, like, I already completed the format, um, especially with my three buds. The only reason why I'm having an issue with the 100 is because I nerfed myself a good chunk, especially since I was using 2-click. Now, since NGS does not have 2-click anymore, I should be adjusting a lot of my playstyle to that 3 click now. And I might do that. I also will do a separate recording <laughs> going into 3 click. But uh, I'm debating about trying to complete Death 100. Um, honestly, I will get around to it and get that out of the way. But yeah, that's the last thing I need to do. Anything else is very optional. Um, I didn't really go thoroughly into crafting and I doubt that I'll go backtrack and go into that. When it comes to some augments and affixes I want to tour around with, especially the Ripper and Slayer abilities, I may just do that on my own accord. I'm not going to do that as a primary fo focus because those abilities do not convert well into NGS. Um, it will stay as it is for PSO2, but in NGS it's not that great, so... I may not push for it, uh, I may try to do it once again whenever I want to, but the reason why I'm doing it is because I do want to see how well my fighter bouncer is, uh, especially with new, because once again that's a very old class combination and I just want to experiment and see how well it is. In terms of doing some other things, I did make a tank build. Now I'm gonna have to make a separate video going into a topic about that, but I did create a tank build with certain augments and affixes that made me unkillable minus a few little things that I will have to address in those future videos. In terms of uh, my characters, they're all fleshed out in terms of fashion. The big things I would want to get is the collab ones, but obviously some of these collab items are long extinct or they're just stupidly goddamn expensive. Um, the other goal, oh wait, I kind of lied. So the third thing that I may want to try to do in terms of my goal is to also send characters to different ship ships. Uh, especially on the Japanese side. So if you want me to visit your ship or send a character over there, let me know in the comments. Right now, I think it's like ship one, I'm going to send someone over there. Ship, I'm already on ship two. Um, ship three, I think someone requested me to go to ship three. So I'm going to send a character there. Ship four, I'm going to send a character over there. I might send a couple more characters on these other ships as well. But yeah, that's going to be a work in progress. And um, the big thing is... Since I have a lot of my stuff shared between all my characters, I have to make independent units and gear for them so they don't need to worry about like doing weeklies or whatnot, or at least be able to withstand and help themselves in certain situations. Now granted that once again NGS is around the corner, but the thing is uh, some of the stuff in NGS might not be well developed and some of the stuff that is carrying over to from PS2 to NGS is going to be a bit better than what it is 
is over there in NGS. Granted that, I may be wrong in said statement. We shall see. But, I already did a lot of the augments and the fixes. I don't need to backtrack, so if I need to do something, it's just on my own accord and whenever I want to do it. But those are the big three big things. Finish story, if I want to try to complete the death 100, and then third one is send my characters off onto these other ships and get to know a bit more of these different communities on these other ships. Uh, but yeah, um, some of the regrets I have is like playing during the moment, especially when it comes to story, because that one had the matter board. Now, I know people are going to have mixed feelings about the matter board, but the thing is, I didn't really play in that moment. I didn't really get to experience the matter board thoroughly. Um, I did toy around with it a bit because I did try to get into sto the story with one of my characters and then I stopped because I was like I want to record it and react to it and just you know have it in an archive of sorts and that's what I'm doing over with uh YouTube or on my channel so I didn't really have the best equipment back then so I didn't really do it but I, I have a bit of a regret not playing during that moment um I kind of regret leaving the game uh as well especially in episode four and five because there was pros and cons to it Especially when it comes to free stuff that was given away and then um, some stuff that I could have got here and there. And just having the, you know, the experience and seeing, once again, the actual moment of, let's say, for example, episode 5 era when Hero was stupidly fucking broken on the Japanese side. It wasn't broken over there in global as much, but for the Japanese side, it was stupidly broken to the point where everyone wanted to be a hero and... Um, it was able to cheese a lot of content easily. But uh, yeah, it's just that I completed a lot of stuff with PSO2. I did a lot of stuff that um, you can see a good chunk of in my channel overall. Uh, the big ones. <sighs> There's like so many videos that I, I could have released as well talking about so many topics for PSO2. And I kind of regret not doing a good chunk of them, but at the same time, with NGS, it was like... The moment NGS got released in that trailer, it stopped my plans on trying to do a lot of things because there was the unknown factor and then it's like, is this going to be really relevant in NGS? Now, when it comes to some of the augments and the fixes, I will make a separate video talking about it. But uh, the question is, do you really want to backtrack and do you really want to go back into PS2 to do some of the things or just press forward and just spend time in the new game? And um, that that's the big thing with me. And it, now this video is going to go way off topic, but this is going to go into some of my philosophies and my mentality and mindset, which is I want to be in the moment. If I am not in said moment, it's not going to be the same. And even though I play the game later, it's not going to be... You know, it's not going to have that same impact. Like those who played in the moment when Fantasy Star 1 got released or Fantasy Star Universe was big and everyone was trying to play it and all that. Or like people played it because they had it and all that jazz. It's like that was in that moment. It is different when you try to play it later and it's kind of a backtrack because it's... Well, this is just my opinion. Now, some people can argue and say otherwise, but I don't like backtracking unless I will waste said time and it, it's like if I had time to try to do it in that moment it would have been great to do it in that moment so if uh, universe was released way back then it's like I should have played that game way back then and this is why I don't try to do a lot of things in the past but once again there's various factors that can influence like that sort of decision it's like this game is so good that you would want to go back or um if if you if there's a certain anime that is really old but a lot of people have so much praise for it it's like maybe i should give it a shot and watch it but once again this ultimately depends on the person and how stubborn they are to do it and also do they have the time and the big thing is um sometimes they don't have the time to to backtrack and that's why you don't see me try to sometimes go backwards but i don't know it depends on how you view what is quote unquote backwards but yeah, that's just a bit of my mentality, but that is it for this video. It's long, and once again, I didn't want to edit it as much, so... Um, hopefully <laughs> you're able to navigate through this stupid-ass video. It's gone into a bit of history, talked about the things I kind of regret not doing, and things I still need to do, but all in all, 
I had a lot of fun. Um, I might do... I still will do a review video for this, but the big thing I had to get through is the story. That is the one thing that's stopping me from even making a review video overall because the story is important because that is part of this game. And it fleshed out a lot of the characters and a lot of the things that has happened and why certain things that we're doing like emergency quests was a thing. Um, and there's, there's a bit of relevance behind these uh, emergency quests as well. And that's, that is through the story. So, and it's also part of the game, so might as well. So that's the one thing that I'm going to also have to put on my things to still do a review video. Because um, this game is eight years old, uh, maybe nine years old now. And the big thing is, like, I'm not gonna, well, I will mention, out, like, global, but I'm not gonna do it in the global perspective because it was skewed and it was rushed. I'm gonna be doing it in the perspective, like, if I do the review video, it's gonna be in perspective of the Japanese side, where I will thoroughly critique the living fuck out of it. Because, once again, I'm, I played a good chunk of those years. Now, in all honesty, I'm still missing a bit of vital information from like the beta and episode 1, even episode 5 during its release. But I heard stories and I played a good chunk of years and I do want to give my two cents and give back to this game. But that's once I get around to it. It's going to take me, one, a lot of revisions. Two, I need to get footage for said review video if I do plan to go along with it. And then three, it's uh, going to be a pain in my ass because it's going to take me some time. But... And along with the fact that I'm going to be playing with NGS as well. But that is it. This video is fucking long. I apologize. But hey look. I wanted to make this sort of video. Just go into it. If you guys want to share me your story. Your own history with PS2 Grand. Uh, even if it's on global. Like if you want to talk about SEA. Japan. Global. Talk to your ups and downs and whatnot. Leave in the comments. But yeah. I did almost everything that I need to do for PS2. Uh, I still need to wrap it up. But. Yep, that is it. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.